Francis Scott Key penned the phrase, the land of the free and the home of the brave, he easily could have been referring to the students of the Springfield Virginia Middle School that bears his name. The student body represents a diverse and enriching cross-section of the population. Key Middle School cultivates these differences in a positive way to ensure that all children are competent and productive. You're special. Thank you for saying that. You know what? I think you are too. Excellent. Every one of you are special. Isn't it nice that someone can say you are? Great. Key Middle School is a wonderful place for children. It is a place where adolescents enter this building every day, 760 odd of them, and meet a very caring uh, faculty who really pushes hard toward academic excellence. The energy that is generated by our students each day propel all of us to really do the very best that we can in offering a variety of opportunities. Uh, some of the things that are of particular pride to me and to this staff, I think, have to do with the many opportunities that our students have to reach out to others, whether as being a part of peer mediation, whether uh, going across the building to Key Center and working with those students, whether it is in a cooperative um, effort in any of the classes and helping other students learn and achieve. The thing that I think marks Key Middle School is the diversity within this building, which is our greatest strength. Um, students, no matter from what background, culture, country, come together here as a community of learners and really are eager to learn, to share their own experiences and have many opportunities to do that. I'm very excited about the technology that has been provided for students this year and in former years and we're building toward even more uh, opportunities technologically for children. Each of our teams, and we have six teams of students in this building as a part of the middle school, uh, have an opportunity to work through the core team technology. And there's a great deal of pride and pleasure uh, for students and for staff. The place itself is a place of pride. Uh, this has been a building that has won an award for five years because of the excellent way in which it's maintained, even though it's one of our older buildings. Um, the thing that I think uh, signifies what's going on at Key is a great deal of energy, a great deal of dedication, and a great deal of knowledge about what's good for children and putting that into practice every day. The community, the parents are here to help us every step of the way and are always looking for ways that we can go down this road together to benefit every child at Key. A strong academic program forms the basis of instruction at Key, but that doesn't mean that learning can't be fun. We ask, we ask you a question, you get it right, you get to pick a letter. If it lands on a free vowel, you get to pick a vowel. It's like Wheel of Fortune. This is our energy carnival at Key. We've participated in Project Need for the last three years. It's the National Energy Education Development Project, and the kids teach each other about the ten sources of energy. They have a great time. We basically present them with the information, and they take it back to their fellow students, and they teach them about energy. They use games, we use chants, the kids run around the halls and test each other, and the culminating activity is our carnival, where they come into their science classes and they play six different games throughout the period. They eat popcorn, they drink sodas, and they have a lot of fun showing that they have learned a lot about energy. We have the support of our PTA, which provides us with some monies to provide prizes for our carnival. And then we also are supported by our wonderful volunteers. They come in and do the popcorn for the students. We couldn't do it without them. We also have volunteers from the community that come in and are guest speakers on energy. And it really makes the students aware of um, how energy takes you know, comes into our world and then how they make it into electricity, how they get electricity when they turn on their CD players and their TVs and their radios and uh, hopefully it will help them in the future when they think about recycling and conservation and what that's going to mean as they grow older. What kind of a car will they drive? Will they have a gasoline powered vehicle or a natural gas vehicle? Will they also be able to plug in and have an electric vehicle as an alternative 
um, vehicle to go back and forth to school or home or work with. Uh, it's, it's just a wonderful project. It was started out in Reston and it has spread across the nation. I've met some wonderful teachers that we work with and uh, everybody in our school participates now. We have the 7th and the 8th graders playing this year and they really build on their knowledge year after year. I just love it. Incorporating technology into the curriculum not only strengthens an already outstanding academic program, but also gives students hands-on experience with the tools they'll be using in the workforce of the future. This is a regular math class and we go to the lab occasionally to do spreadsheets and also uh, to do uh, typing up some projects that we're working on. 4 this is a seventh grade math class and today we are typing a writing sample that illustrates and explains how to solve an equation involving the distributive property in math. The distributive uh, property uh, tells how many groups there are of certain terms and in the particular equation that the class is doing today is they have four groups of x plus 11 and they're they're working that with an equation. First of all, they simplify using the distributive property and then they start solving a two-step equation from that. And yesterday the students wrote the draft. Today they came into the computer lab and they're typing up their draft and making corrections on it. And this is going to be used as one of the writing samples required by Fairfax County at the end of the year. Do you have a setup? What? Do you have a setup? Yes. Okay. Now we have to have a good smile. We don't want any grouches. That's a good one. Ready? Bingo. Thank you. This happens to be a Spanish class. We're working with the French and Spanish classes. And uh, we are teaching them, it's, it's an old-fashioned method called a moi poster, which we found was uh, very helpful in uh, foreign languages and teaching children how to uh, express themselves, talk about themselves to, in the real world. My, not just my name is, but I like this, and I have so many pets and whatever. What we're doing is we're having each student is making their own slide. Uh, with their own picture on it. They've had to, before they came here, they had to write up uh, the information they wanted to put on. Then we have been showing them how to do backgrounds, variated backgrounds, how to use the um, word processor, um, get everything, all put in all the foreign accent marks, put it together, and then what we will do later is we will put all these different slides together into one slideshow, and then the teachers will be able to show that slideshow to all the classes, and also hopefully to be a motivational project for next year, because at the beginning of the year, the French and Spanish teachers will be able to show those students what they will be able to do to accomplish at this time of the year. In the future, uh, we'll have the equipment at this particular school and at most schools. Uh, the capability is there is to also have it overlaid with speech, uh, which would be the best possible thing where they could have the writing as well as they could hear the pronunciation and their language and their language skills, sort of a finishing project for the year of what I've learned in, uh, in this particular case, level one. The other person that you see in the room is Linda Knox and she's a technology aide and without her we really couldn't do the project because we have to do uh, 10 students a day. Uh, in order to get uh, every, all the Spanish and the French students done within one week so that we're not taking too much time off of class time. I'm working basically with the students uh, in their language, in the spelling, in the accent marks, putting the uh, whole thing together. While math and science utilize various forms of technology as tools for instruction, it's the human element provided by volunteers and teachers that helps students get motivated about learning. Just get the soil out. And we're, we're going to go ahead, we're going to take about a thousand of them out. There's somebody who wants to start their own worm bin, so we can harvest about a thousand of them. Yeah. So we're just giving them away? We're just giving them away. If you guys want them, we can take them home, too. 
Project, Project Bliss is a program that we started this year, and it has to do with um, trying to work with seventh graders and getting them excited into working in science careers. Basically, Project Bliss stands for uh, building lifelong interest in scientific studies. And the way that we thought we would do this is get about um, 10 kids each class period for a whole year and work with them on hands-on interactive activities. For example, today we're working with our worm bin. And in the, the worm bin, they've been composting for about, um, about six months now. We started out with 1,000 worms. We now have 3,000 worms. And they eat all of the organic material that the kids bring in and feed them, about five pounds a week. And they convert that into a, a great soil mixture that we're going to take outside and use in our farming area. So we, we try and take all kinds of activities that they're doing in their science classroom, things that um, might be a little bit boring, like scientific investigation, and then put our, a real life spin on it. So what does it mean to investigate the, um, the earth, or what does it mean to uh, use a mathematical principle to measure things? So each, each Friday we get these kids together and um, either take them outside and do some water testing with them, or uh, we're going to be going to a water treatment plant and an um, um, energy conversion plant where they're taking waste and actually converting it into energy. And then they, they start seeing applications of science in the real world, and hopefully that turns them on into taking science as a real career. So what we've got is a few people over here on the fives, one person over here and a few people here in the tens group, right? <laughs> Okay, and the nines and the sixes are, a few more nines and sixes. Okay. Before you move, I want you to imagine for a second you're a bug up in the middle of the ceiling looking down at the lines. What kind of a pattern would you see? When you go do your drawing, see if you see a pattern like a bug would see. This is a group of, uh, it started off with 72 girls. It's the uh, FAME program, Females okay. Achieving Minority well, Equity. And basically the program is to encourage girls of this particular age to take more math and science courses, to be more interested in math and science, and to do better in them. Uh, Mrs. Hershey, the science chair here at Key, and myself were given the task of setting up the program. And we decided to do two different uh, things. We decided to have an after-school program of five sessions. Basically what we're doing is using some of the equals materials, which were de materials developed especially for girls in uh, math. And this particular group is now doing a, uh, an activity called Scatter Matters, where, they're, where they collect data and then they will be graphing the data uh, in scatter plots and discussing the, how to do those activities. And we hope to end up with them using the graphing calculators to uh, do those same types of activities. Um, the other activity we will do with these girls is to take them to the uh, Goddard Space Center on a, on a Saturday to uh, get them into more science activities. These are 7th and 8th grade girls who were recommended by their math and science teachers as girls who are interested in math and science and have some skill and we hope will pursue uh, more math and science as they go through middle school and high school. FAME is just one special activity at Key that meets outside the normal school day. Other programs exist for people who need some additional help to reach success. Go like this. Okay, yeah. And for this, because she doesn't speak a lot of English, you can use Spanish, okay? Okay. But use as much English as you can. Okay, okay. Melissa? Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Bye. 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 This activity is a group of ESL students. We call it the ESL Craft Club. It's students that are from all levels across the board. We do this after school in order to offer them an opportunity to practice English in other than a strictly educational, instructional setting. The students are very anxious to stay. And it, it's really twofold because we also are, have many students who are not in regular civics classes. Therefore, they use this opportunity to plan a business and make items to sell at the spring ESL uh, economics fair. We also, of course, have time to tutor students and to work with homework, but today on this particular occasion, all the students here came to work on crafts rather than looking for any type of help with homework or classwork. 
I love these cups. And these work out real well. That's a pretty size. Yeah. Okay, why don't you let me stir? I'm gonna keep this going while you put the shells in so it doesn't set up too quickly. Have you oiled this one? Oh, I'll, I'll no. The activities that the kids are doing today include uh, looming with beadwork. We also have some students making necklaces. Um, we've got two students over there buffing with a dremel. They're polishing um, coin jewelry that we've soldered together. Um, Siad in the corner is uh, finishing up a mirror that we made. They cut the stained glass and uh, just did various things to it. And then we have our group of girls, uh, they're making paperweights out of plaster and shells that we found at the beach. So we're going to underline the answers in the article. I'm going to give you 10 minutes to read the article and answer the questions. Remember, we write in complete sentences. This program is called More Time for Learning. It's for students uh, who can come in and have extra help in their activities and their homework and their activities during the day also. We also work on skill building um, activities such as, you know, English help, uh, math help, and especially science help with learning the scientific method and things of that nature. So we're not only a homework program, we're also a program to bring along skills that students may need for high school and for next year, eighth grade. So we're here to provide a resource for students to continue learning and to continue to do well in their subjects. That's what we're here for. This program runs four days a week from 2.30 to 5.30. Uh, it runs in three-week intervals, and parents are, uh, are able to sign their kids up for the next three weeks if they think that their students still need some help in some of their subjects. By helping others, students at Key are really helping themselves. They become better learners by being teachers, and they become better people through sharing, caring, and understanding. Two, and three, and four, and five. Six, seven, good Mikey. Eight, nine, ten. One more time. One, two, three. Four, the special education program at Key Middle School has two teachers. Those two teachers teach functional academics. My position is I am an adaptive PE teacher. I come in with a recreational program and a physical education program that meets the needs of the individual. And in my program, we provide and encourage our students to develop to their fullest potential. We have games of rec leisure games. We have community integration that we go out of the school and visit different places in the community. We also do, uh, do work that is related to or uh, integrated in the school with the regular school program, but we have our own curriculum. So we try to adapt and try to get as much exposure for the, our students to see the general education students in our school. The peer helpers are those students who are able and willing to help our students and who have accepted our students of special education. They are volunteers and they also are, are get a credit for the work that they have done in, in our program. They come to PE or they may be assigned to a class to do certain duties and responsibilities and to help the students socially, emotionally, and help them in such a way that will meet their potential. I'm Sarah. As a peer helper, one of the highlights of our program is working with the MOD students. We go in their classrooms every Tuesday and read with them, teach them how to use the computers, and play games such as Monopoly or Scrabble. <clears throat> the greatest part of working with the MOD students is that we develop great friendships. I'm Danielle, and one of the ways in which we help our peers is by way of the talking knocker. And if any students have any problems or concerns, they can um, write it down and slip it into the talking knocker. And at the end, end of the day, we get the notes and we respond to them. We come up with a solution, and then we slip it back into the student's locker. I'm Jennifer. Another activity that peer helpers do is we show around new or transferring students. We take the students around to their classes and we answer any questions that they may have. 
I'm Serenia, and one of the things we will also do as a peer helper is the walkthroughs, where we will show the rising seventh graders around the school and, and answer any questions that they will have. I'm Bridget, and another thing we do is back to school night, and that's where we help the parents find their children's classrooms. I'm Erica. One of the fun things that we all look forward to as peer helpers is going back to our old schools. We talk to the sixth graders about coming to middle school and answer any questions they may have. I'm Mika. We help at orientation night before school starts in the fall. Students meet their teachers and find their new classes. I'm Christina. Peer helpers are also trained as peer mediators. I've been a peer mediator at Key for two years. This program is helpful to anyone because you get to talk to a peer instead of an adult you're not comfortable with. The peer mediators were recommended by teachers. The days of the training, we talked about the problem solving skills and the process of peer mediation. After peer mediation takes place, students walk out with their problems solved, and if they aren't, they can come back in a week to reevaluate their solutions. This program teaches leadership and develops confidence. In this year's program, we have 13 seventh grade peer mediators and 27 eighth grade peer mediators. A teacher trained in mediation is always present during each, pro each session. Well, I was at the mall and uh, I saw her walking with another guy and I saw her hug the guy and I was very concerned, so. Um, well, I could have introduced Mateen to my cousin so that he wouldn't think anything was going on. At Key Middle School, our teachers support the peer mediation program. We have 13 teachers involved as coaches in the program this year. The counseling staff provides us with excellent training um, for being a coach, uh, trying not to insert ourselves into the situation. Because we have 13 teachers, each teacher is only scheduled for mediation twice a month. That uh, does not take up too much of our time and allows us to schedule kids so that they don't miss their quizzes or tests or important parts of their classes to participate uh, in the program. The nice thing about the program from the teacher perspective is it allows the teachers to see both the, the students who are involved in the mediation and those who are conducting it in a very positive uh, light. In addition to all the required core subjects, Key offers an outstanding music program for both instrumentalists and vocalists. Well, the string program in Fairfax is 4 through 12, and here at Key we have 7th and 8th grade students um, who've come from the elementary school level, some of them beginning in 4th, 5th, or 6th grade, and some of them starting at the, at the middle school level. I have a class of just beginners, 7th and 8th grade students as well at this level. The students uh, perform in two different levels at this school, intermediate and advanced. The intermediate group generally plays about grade 3 literature on a scale of 0 to 6, and the advanced group generally running in the 4 group. Um, we perform a number of concerts th throughout the course of the year, generally at Lee High School in the auditorium there. And then we also take an annual spring trip. This year we're going to Kings Dominion. The students will compete um, and then spend the day in the park. We also do an uh, orchestra festival where we, um, where we compete, well not really compete, but where we go for ratings to see how the students are doing on a musical basis by professionals in the area. Orchestra here is an elective. It's a course the students decide to take. Generally, those who've begun in the elementary school do decide to continue. We're very fortunate here at Key. Um, my husband and I both run the elementary schools. We have four of our feeder schools between the two of us. I'm here at the middle school, and then he is at Lee High School. And so in terms of continuity, we have a very fortunate setup. The students know where they're going when they come to the middle school, and then they're very aware of who the high school director is. Um, the, the students do choose to take this as an elective, and it is a year-long course. Now is the month of May when merry lads are playing. La 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 la. Each with his body lass a dancing on the grass. La 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 la. 
Key Middle School is renowned throughout the Mid-Atlantic states for its consistently superior musical performing groups. It's currently enrolling 350 students in the bands, choirs, and orchestras. The Key Music Department serves just under half of the school population, which makes it proportionally one of the largest music programs in Fairfax County. We participate in everything, regional, district, county, competitions and festivals. The choir ha itself has a 20-year tradition of excellence, capturing first place trophies since 1981. Deep within each heart, there lies a magic spark that lights the fire of our imagination and sends the dawn of man, the strength of just I can't has brought together people of all nations. There's nothing ordinary in the living of each day. There's a special part every one of us will play. I think our music students will agree that it's a valuable thing to elect music as a course because it fulfills a need in their human spirits to achieve beauty. Physical education educates their bodies. The academics address their intellects, but music educates their souls, and it's the soul which makes a person a human being. That's why we think music is important for our kids. I believe our kids would agree with us. Mine will take you far, the rest is just pure heart. Find your faith is all your own creation And every boy and girl As they come into this world They bring the gift of hope and inspiration Feel the flame forever Teaching lessons we must learn To bring us closer to the power Striving to be the best applies not only to the students, but to staff as well. We're the custodial staff at Key Middle School in Springfield, Virginia. We're standing here today holding our accomplishments for the last five years. Every year, Fairfax County have an award that's called the Blue Ribbon Award. And that award designates one of the cleanest schools in that particular area for that particular school. And we're very proud here at Key Middle School that we have won that award for the last five years. We are yet trying to win one more award, which will give us six consecutive years. And we're very proud of that fact because they took a team effort for us to obtain that. And I very want to stress that very much because if there have not been a team effort, we would not have been able to maintain it for so many years in a row. And we're very proud of that because the building this particular year is 27 years old. And we take pride in our work as evident in the trophies that we are showing here. We also take pride that our children have such a clean facility to come to. If you were to evaluate the school systems in the area, you'd find that Fairfax County is one of the mainstays in public schools for cleanliness. So we here at Key are very proud of the accomplishments that we have done. It is um, a place where kids are happy to be. Uh, they show that in their um, activities every day, whether it's in the cafeteria, in the halls, uh, or in their classrooms, that the energy that is expelled by them uh, is the energy that helps us going, uh, keeps us going, and uh, it's a dynamic, wonderful place to be.